HP. You make the dumbest pre-built system out of all the OEM manufacturers I have ever seen. Well, actually, it might be tied with Dell, but this is a bit ridiculous. To make this HP Pro desktop into a gaming computer, there are so many little loops and bounds that you have to go through to get this thing to work uh, properly. It's actually kind of insane. Like, why can't you just be like ASUS and use non-proprietary parts like that's universal with everything and that just works and you can seamlessly take it out from one system into a new system that works with all different standard of power supplies and graphics cards and spacing and everything else. But no, you decide not to and you create an abomination like this. Now you might look at the inside of this computer and think to yourself, Zach, that looks like a normal computer. What's so bad about it? Well, there are several reasons. Number one, this power supply. For some reason, they don't use a standard one. They use, I think it only goes to like 12 volt that goes to the motherboard. But Anywho, what the power connector is, is a four pin CPU, which is perfectly normal and perfectly fine. And every other more motherboard has it. What doesn't it have? It doesn't have a 24 pin connector. Instead, what it has is this small six pin and also another, not this, this is just whatever another six pin connector yeah they make it so confusing there's only a couple wires coming from the power supply but maybe it's actually simpler because there's only a couple wires coming from the power supply so essentially you're getting these three wires now this other six pin is just to connect all your drives and stuff that's it that's all it goes to it goes to molex and e sata or power sata and that's pretty much it so if you wanted to put in this gaming power supply you you can't because there's no 24 pin like this so that's a problem, but I can understand where they come from it. It's power saving and it's only like a 320 watt power supply. So that's why they probably do it to save on that power, more efficient, less electricity, cheaper for them probably. But anyway, the specs of this machine, I think is an i5-4460 and eight gigabytes of RAM. But what I wanna do is turn this into a full-fledged gaming PC, well, a budget gaming PC. So let's try to do that. So usually like any other gaming PC, what we have to do is add a graphics card because internal graphics, well, you don't really want to game on them now, do you? So you might be thinking, oh, just grab a graphics card like, uh, like this GTX 1070 and throw it in there. Well, let's try that. Any graphics card that you try to slot in here will always bump into this, unless you have like a weird gap right here behind the graphics card, which not very many graphics cards have that. And this one's too long anyway, so you gotta find a shorter graphics card, which they sometimes are hard to find in a time like this when every graphics card is kind of expensive and everything is pretty much sold out. And I don't know why you would even put this back here. I would love to meet the man that said, hmm, yes, let's put a USB 3 cable thing behind the graphics card so that they can never fit a bigger graphics card in, so it makes a life miserable and they have to spend money on a smaller graphics card or something like that. So when the person has to go buy a new PC, they have to come back to us to buy a brand new system. All right, so you might be thinking, just throw the right angle connector. Well, if you watch that video, there's a bit of a problem with it. And it's not something that I would feel comfortable reselling to a customer that every single time they turn it on, it beeps and screams at them because it says there's no USB 3 connection. So what did I do to fix this? Well, I scoured the internet and found, and I found this RX 480 in which I paid 8904, which honestly, kind of a really good price for an RX 480. And it uh, only has one six pin. In order to actually get a normal power supply to work in this system, you have to buy an extra adapter, which is looking like something like this, which takes a normal 24 pin connector and takes it to uh, the two six pins, as in one normal six pin and then one tiny white little connector. So I actually have no idea if this actually works. It took like three months to get it here from China, especially in the pandemic, it even took longer than usual. So I actually forgot about this, but then when it arrived in the mail, I decided to actually make this video. So let's see if this thing actually works. What kind of screw connector is that? All right, now that we have this unplugged, simply take it out and then fit in the new one. I hope this actually can fit. I hope they didn't have a different standard size. Oh, they did. It's taller. That is... What? Oh yeah, that's not really the same now, is it? So a normal power supply's height is about 3.4 inches. This one is around 3.83 inches. So I can't stick a normal standard power supply into the H HP desktop because the screw holes then don't line up. This is that I didn't even I didn't even this is actually harder than I thought. I bet I know what I could do. I bet I could 3D print a bracket to fit in there and then screw the power supply to it.
Alright, so four hours later, and my print is finally finished. One small problem, uh, the holes, I made 2.3 millimeters and they're too small for a normal screw, so I'm gonna have to fix that. What? I'm not wearing a different shirt. No. Um, we were successful in putting in all the screws. I actually managed to get them all to line up. What had happened is I needed to do a lot of drilling and I was successful. There's the adapter. So that only took around uh, four hours. So. so you might be thinking what's next? Well, we still need to test out this 24 to six pin adapter. But first I gotta take this one and this one, simply connect it. I love Chinese wholesale products. This actually seems to be made decently well. So we just plug this one into this one. And this one into, ooh, I think it's a white one. Power all the SATA drives. We're gonna stick this one in the six pin over here. So now that we are all connected, I guess there's only one more thing to try, and that would be to power it on. So let's do that. So it looks like we're all hooked up. As you can see, the USB 3 is still properly connected. The graphics card is small enough to fit. Power supply is all in. Everything's connected, ready to go. I'm about to press the power button over here. So, uh, yeah, three, two, one. No beeps. Booting right into Windows. Does this actually just work? So that means the 24 pin connector is obviously working. No, I am shocked. No beeping, no having a cow because we're not using the power supply that's made for this. The adapter that comes from China works. Wow. Um, that's what you have to do to turn a HP Pro desktop into an actual Pro desktop, a gaming computer. But yeah, if you wanna see benchmarks from this computer, be sure to check out another channel that I have where I will be posting those benchmarks. You can check out that channel. I will have it linked down in the description. But honestly, I think that is it. The 24 pin connector from China, it worked. I had to make a power supply bracket to fit the power supply, which I guess this could have been all, no because it has proprietary front panel connectors. So I guarantee if we would have had to put this in another case, the hardware wouldn't work because it would sense that it would be in a different case. I don't put it past them to do that. But honestly, I'm kind of astonished that I was able to make this into a gaming computer that actually seems to work properly without any hiccups or whatnot. And I honestly thought that I wasn't gonna be able to sell this as a gaming computer. So I guess I can now. But um, anyway, be sure to check out the benchmarks. This video is probably long enough and I probably talked enough and I'm boring you to death. So we might as well end it. Thank you so much for watching and maybe I'll see you in the next one.